Good morning! How is everybody today? Stephanie here with this dip and paint, and I'm just like having too much fun with these paper flowers. It's crazy. Um, thought I would come in and say, hey. Um, if you remember or you watched on Monday, I painted the lettering, showed you how to use a tracer and, and letter some words on a uh, on a piece of paper. It's a piece of paper. That's what it is. It's, it's a nice cardstock. It's a good scrapbooking quality cardstock. Um, I've got this big background paper. Wasn't sure if I'm going to do. I'm not, still not sure if I'm going to doodle something on the back of it or just do the paper flower set I made. But I did say I wanted some paper flowers on it because you know flowers are pretty. I couldn't decide if I wanted white ones or yellow ones. I couldn't find any yellow paper, so I've been over here painting paper all morning. So I'm going to turn you down so that you can see what I've been working on. Oh wait, they're all gone. No, it's okay. Um, I am going to move this. No, I'm not. I'm just going to lay this right here so that y'all can see. I'm going to hold it on my hand because this is still kind of wet where I've been painting flowers. I went on my friend Char's page, Folk City Art, and I made some paper flowers this morning. Here are my paper daisies. And I've got one more to assemble over here, so I've got it ready to assemble so y'all can see how to do that too. And then, so I was thinking I might do another one. I may go and cut a smaller one as well. I don't know. Or do you think one or two like that? I don't want it to look super goofy and lopsided. And I've also got a rose that I've got ready to play with. And I have several rolled flowers. And I actually have a couple of different roses. So I have a Cricut. I had a Cricut. I have a Cameo now. Y'all, if you would say hi and let me know you're watching. Um, and I cut, this is the layered rose. And then this is, I've got laid out over here the blooming rose, and I think that's the one I'm going to put together for you, show you how to do. But I also have, several years ago, I made these. And I'm going to tell you all, this glue stays together really well, because these have been in a baggie for like 10 years, where I've used them and then pulled them out, and they haven't been there. These I stamped on. I used a sponge and some ink. Um, the, this was a solid color paper. But these are little bitty rolled paper roses. You want to paint. Okay, well, what do you want to paint, Miss Faye? What do we want to paint? Because I was, I have painted on these this morning. It's what I've been doing. That's what all this yellow paint is. Because um, I just was like not sure what I needed to paint today. So, and I did need to finish this project. So I was playing with that. And I was going to say that on my daisies, if you wanted, you could paint your uh, paint on your petals before you. Okay, i got to get the camera to cooperate. See, the inside has the three different layers to it, just so you all know real quick. And then um, I'm going to show you my puppy I painted last night with my friend. I think when I redo it, when I do it again, or next time I do it, I'll do it in different colors. But here's my little paint puppy. I'm going to do something mixed media with him. Somebody said do them in turquoise and, and orange and pink, and I was like, hmm. So I don't know. We'll see. He's very, she's very whimsical. But she needs a flower on her head or something. On, you know, a little bow flower. Whoop. Up here. Maybe down, oh, that's too big with her tongue there. We'll see. Maybe she's sitting in a flower garden. We shall see. I haven't decided yet what I'm doing with that one, mixed media wise. But you can paint on these. And I did really quickly want to put, since this is what I was working on today, at least for right now. And Miss Faye, like I said, just tell me what it is you want to paint and we'll figure it out. Because I'm not necessarily glued to doing this today. Um, Mesticheights.com is where I found the patterns, the cutout patterns. You can find them. 
you can print the PDF and cut yourself and then have a template. And then you could lay this on tissue paper and do layered tissue papers. Done the rolled roses before. They hold up really good. Yes, they do, Miss Pam. How are you today, honey? I haven't talked to you in too long, sweet pea. And this, this, I'm sharing a site right now that had the pattern that you could use for your Cricut or your SVG, your Cricut or Cameo projects for dozens of flowers. Like I have 12 different styles of this rolled flower right here. I mean, of rolled flowers. And then if you don't have a cutting machine, what you can do is print it on paper and then use it as a template and trace it and cut it out. These wouldn't be too bad to cut out by hand. Some of the others are definitely not going to be too hard to cut out. Um, right now, I'm doing very well. I will say this. You have to subscribe to her, to her page to get them, to get the link to her library. But it was kind of worth it. And I'm thinking, well, if I don't like what I get, then I can always unsubscribe real quick, real easy, get what I want and go. Um, but if I like what I see, I'll stay subscribed and then I can see what else she's got. Big flowers, little flowers, because she's got some giant flowers. She's got some sunflowers and some other stuff on there. That, And then she's got some watercolor where she's walking you through watercolor and some of the petals. And I'm thinking that's another idea that I would love to play with. She's got a, a lily, I think, that she did some watercoloring for. But I'm like, oh. So worth it. Okay, so I'm posting that real quick, and I hope that'll post it where it needs to be posted so you guys can see it. I just want to make sure I told everybody where I got it before I forgot to, because this is not an original pattern with me. None of these are. I found several different patterns. Here's one type of rose where it's cut out and you'll see it looks a little different than this one. Um, one was a blooming rose. One was just a layered rose. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing with all of these. I painted these. I'm still kind of waiting on them to dry. I did not have any yellow paper at all. And I wanted some yellow because I wasn't sure if I was going to do daisies or not do daisies or if I wanted some yellow roses because I wanted some yellow or I thought I did anyway. I told myself I did. So I figured out that the paintbrush is not as, as good a roll on it. So kind of folding that a little bit. You're going to kind of roll the center one. And it might be better to go ahead and do that for the rolled one. Because this is going to be kind of the center of your rose. Okay, I don't know if y'all can see me I'm trying to roll that. I'm rolling more the bottom part of it. You kind of want it to look like that. Okay. And so for this, you're going to kind of do it a little and then kind of roll them out. I think this one may have actually just been roll them out. Like I used to do this with scissors for, with ribbon for curling the ribbon on packages and stuff. And that's kind of what we're doing. It's kind of using a scraping type motion on the back of it to curl our petals out. Hey, babe. All right, girls. Man in the house, you got to behave yourselves. <laughs> Oh, I'm just being silly and y'all know it. Okay, so this is not looking right. So this may not be right. But I know that this was supposed to just be kind of a... And you kind of fold them up just a little bit at the edges of our circle there. And then you're just going to kind of layer it off centered as it's coming through.
And you're just gonna, like I said, you're gonna layer them like that as you're attaching them to each other. And this is one that I didn't have my cutting blade set right when I was cutting it, so this edge is a little rough. Sorry. Still learning the new program and machine with the upgrade that I did. Again, I'm just kind of pushing that center down a little bit. And, kind of, and so these will start layering kind of on top of each other where you'll have some bigger and some littler kind of laying on top of each other as it's going out. So that's supposed to be going the other way. Should I have been doing them the other way? Does that look better then? Yeah. Mm. Okay, I wasn't as impressed with this one as I was with the others, so I think I'm going to set this one aside and we're going to play with the one that I did like. I loved my daisies. I showed y'all a minute ago where I'd done a couple of them. And I think that's what I'm going to put on here. I've just got to decide if I want to do a smaller one or not. So what I wanted to show you all really quickly was how to do those. You have two of these and three of these. And I used ink on these for my stamp stuff instead of the paint because I was... The, the cardstock's not super high quality, so it seems like it's really staying wet really long. So you've got three of these. One of them's a little bit bigger. One of them's medium, and one's just a hair smaller, just barely. And then you've got two of these. What I suggest you do is, and you've got a tab on both of them. That's where you're going to glue them together at. I'm going to take your scraper and kind of pull down the backs of them because you do want to turn these down a little bit. I figured out the hard way. It's much easier to do this before you attach them to to even form the circle that they're going to form form your little circle there now when i cut these it seemed like it cut twice around the edges and kind of trimmed a second one off so beware it might be Kind of funny when you first pull them off, but that might have been just the piece that I had, the way I brought it into my program. I've had it open too long this morning. Okay, there's some blue flowing. I don't use a lot. You stick it on the tab and then you just bring them together where they look like they're about as evenly spaced as the other ones. And I just kind of pinch for a second. Hold them there. I'm going to do the same with this one. Put a little bit of glue on my tab. I'm going to pinch right here. I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to go around this circle right here with my glue. You could use hot glue, you could use Eileen scrap glue, you could potentially use Elmer's full glue. Um, I don't happen to have any of that in my house right now, so I can't, but you potentially could. Um, I'm using what I happen to have, which happens to be a lot of scrapbooking quality, card making, stuff that I've had for several years. Okay. And I set them, I set my petals slightly offset so that they would stay really well right there. And now I'm going to take my center one here and since I have glue drop, I'm just going to kind of drag it. Get some glue around my edges there. 
sticking out bits there. And I'm going to place it down in the center and gently tap it down. So that will kind of delay against my petals there. And you can stop right there. That's a pretty daisy right there. If you don't want to fiddle with the other layers, you do not have to. I think this one's plenty pretty, just like it is. But what I get? Go big or go home, right? So I'm going to use my little scraper and kind of scrape these little round ones. Scrape around the edge of my little bitty. And kind of curve them. You want them to have a little bit of curve, not too much. You don't want them to stand on the end so that you can't get the other one in there. And then you're going to glue the center of the circle there. And I try to, again, I try to do it slightly offset so that they're not like right on top of each other. And set it right there. And I'm going to kind of push them up just a little bit because I don't want to lay too flat. And I don't want to glue to dry with it laying flat and stick some of the middle row down. We're wanting to add to that dimensional effect there. Okay, let's see if I can get it to focus. There you go. Okay, when you look at it, there you go. Now you can really see it. There's one, the, the bigger one's laying flat. This one's going to add just that little bit. And what we're going to do with this one is we're, I'm going to curl them toward the center. But then I'm going to kind of push at the base of our circle and make them stand a lot closer. This one's a little harder for me to get put in correctly and keep all of my pieces grow, all my petals curled the way I want them to, all my stamen. I think it's stamen. This is the inside part of it. Okay, so now I've curled them all, but I'm going to kind of push them down at the center so that they stick almost straight up. See how I've got it like that? If you turn it over, they're sticking way up there in the middle and that's kind of how we want it to go in the very center so i'm kind of gently holding those and i'm going to put my glue on there i'm not a lefty well, bear with me so i'm going to just kind of set it down here and i'm going to again slightly offset and i'm going to kind of pull them Toward the center because I want it to kind of stay more. I want it to give it that 3D effect and keep it nice and right in there. Okay, and so now we've got a daisy with some. You can see the different layers in there. All right, so there's that one got another daisy and i wanted to show y'all and i have a quilling tool you do not have to have a quilling tool to do this there are like several different ones of these that she came up that i got off of that web page there are a dozen or so other places that i found some but you start at the center this is your base that you're going to be gluing it to and you're going to kind of fold that because you want it to if you happen to have a quilling tool, you can stick it right in there kind of a thing and start rolling. I can get it on there. And I kind of set it like that. And I'm going to kind of pull it this way. I'm going to start at this edge over here so I can spin it around. So I want it to roll around and get it kind of tight. I'm going to do the bigger end because maybe it will just be a little easier for me. There we go. That's what I'm going to do. Start? No. I think you start on the outside edge. That's what you're supposed to do. Sorry, y'all. Okay. Correction. You're going to start on the outside edge. And you're going to put this on. 
or you're going to wrap it around a pencil or a pen or just tightly roll it toward itself. And then you're just going to gently, gently roll it. I like the idea of the quilling tool because it will let go of it and you can just kind of hold it and roll it. And it's kind of like it's pinching it because it's got the two little sides on it grabbing it. But it's not... You start at the outside and you roll it toward the center. And you just roll and roll. And you're going to keep the edge kind of flat right there. See how I'm rolling it? It's staying kind of flat here on the bottom. You're going to keep rolling. And we're going to roll it towards the center. And as you get to the center, we'll pull that out. And you're going to see you've got this little, the little, it almost looks like a Mickey Mouse tab there at the bottom. When you get to the very end, it's not really Mickey Mouse, but it's a circle there. When you get there, I like to use a very good liquid glue. I like liquid glass. It's a close to my heart product. I don't even know if they still sell it or not. If they don't, I'm in trouble. Um, I like it because it dries clear. There is nothing about it that I can still see. And if it, you can see any of it, it looks like it is water, like dew on the flower or something. So I liked it. And I'll put a small bead on there. And then you fold it and you kind of make sure that all of your folded. We you had it. See how it's all still kind of flat there? You want to make sure you keep it kind of flat and then come into that. And then you're just going to kind of push it down. On top of that, and then it's little bee flower. And I'll get get it on there and get it dry in just a minute. It just takes it a minute to. And I tend to put mine down on the on the table to help push them down in there. There was one of these that I really wanted to try before I get off mine. And I did some bigger to try as well. This one, I thought the way the flower was on there was very interesting. So I'm going to roll it really fast. Before we pop here. And then I've got one other flower that I really want to show y'all. But I thought the petals on this were especially interesting for a rolled flower. I'm wondering how well it'll do. It doesn't have much of the base to hold it still. So as it's going, is it going to come undone? Getting very boxy. Maybe I'm not rolling it tight enough. Got some curve back to it. Who knows? I'll think about it in a minute. I was working on flowers for this project here, and I was really wanting to see what we could come up with. All right, so tomorrow I'm potentially doing my resin project just for those interested. Just, I haven't decided what time I'm going to do it, but I will be on here at some point. Philip has a doctor's appointment tomorrow afternoon, so I'll either go early or it'll be in the later in the evening. All right, so 
pouring some liquid glass right here. Okay. It's been too long since I used it and it's not long to give it up. And that would be why I kept it in there. I can't even see the glue on there. Okay. I'm wondering if the way this one's set up, if it'll lay a little flatter. Say hey, tell me where you're watching from. If you don't mind, I would love to be chattering with y'all. It's way more fun when you have somebody doing it with you. Okay, so that one looks pretty. I might could do it bigger. That one's pretty. I like how it's turning out. We might do it bigger next time. You may have to go back and cut it a little bigger for future use. Then, but then here's these little row of flowers. And there were about 12 of them on the one that I, on that, that sat on one piece. And then I, there was all kinds of different things set over there. So here's a couple of rolled flowers. We did our daisy. I'm trying to decide if I like the stamped center, the ink stamped, or the painted center better. I don't know. This camera and I are not cooperating. There we go. That's better. So this one I did with the ink. And this one I did with paint, so I painted on my flower bits. Um, okay, I think these may be dry enough. We're gonna do this folded this this rose because I think it's gonna be really cute. And I'm going to put it on this glue. I don't want it to get any more dry. Okay, so what you want to do is kind of in the middle of the heart shaped petal, kind of fold it. Okay, I'm going to fold my flat, my petals out a little bit, just on the ends. And then we're going to kind of tap them in the center there and kind of give them a little bit of a crease there. Does that make sense, guys? Almost like I'm cutting them in half, but trying to hold, help them to hold up a little bit better. This is going to be the center of our row. And then we're just going to kind of fold those up near our center. So at the center there, we're going to kind of push them up a little bit. Because so we're going to go up and out. I think it needs to go that way. And I'm going to put that little guy in the center. Now yeah, here. All right, so we've got six different ones at different sizes. Let me pull this this away. And I started with the smallest one, and now I'm going to go to the middle. We're going to do the same thing. Kind of curl our paper. And then fold it gently. I'm just kind of placing it where the, the fold line is right between my fingers and gently placing down to kind of give it a little bit of a fold. Right there. Right there. And right there. And then I'm going to fold that up and up and up. And see, I've got it kind of where it folds up and out. And we'll be staggering this one inside of that one. So I'm going to put a drop of our liquid glass if I can get it to come out. Well, that's what I get for not using it. 
You know what? We'll just use that one. It'll be okay. This one has been working just fine all morning. It just got a little drippy a while ago, so I was just thinking I wanted to not have it make a big mess. But we can work around it. So slightly offset so that the, each of the petals is kind of right in between the next set of petals. And you'll gently, gently press it. And while that's drying, we're going to do our next set. Gently fold. And I don't know if you should press the centers first or fold it because it seems like doing one undoes the other. So I don't think there's a right way to do it. I'm just kind of going in this order because it just seemed like it would work a little bit better. But Oh, and now we're going to kind of pull them up and push them, pull them back up and then kind of fold them back. Maybe I should be folding them the other way. Should they be folded the other way? I can always change it later. I guess I can always fold them the other way. Because this doesn't look rose-like to me. The roses should be curling up, huh? So let's, before I attach that, let's fold it the other way. Or scrape and fold it up. Okay. Won't be staying much longer, guys. Didn't want to keep y'all too long, but I did want to show y'all some different flower options. And I think I'm going to do the daisies on my barn box piece where I did my barn box from my friend Melissa over at the Graceful Barn where I started on that project from her and I just wanted y'all to see some of the cute possibilities that doesn't even count the wood blocks and all that good stuff that she sent so, and she does a ton of lives in her group for it so that you can know how to use it so let's fold it the other way instead Up towards the center. Up towards the center. There we go. Got them folded a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put the blue right here. That just seems a little easier. I'm trying to get it in the bottom. And again, we're going to kind of offset it so that the petals are kind of wrapping around each other there. Yeah, it looks a little more rose like little bit. I'm going to kind of cup it a little bit as I'm pushing it down and together. And kind of mold it a little bit more in that rounded kind of. Okay, and while that's drying, I've got this one. I'm going to fold scrape and turn and roll towards the center have to be gentle with this one I got in too big a hurry when I'm spinning it off and I kind of bent one of the petals on it and it kind of tore close to the base so I'm trying really hard not to tear it up so anyway I'm going to kind of them up and then we'll throw blue in the center again. And this petal going between those two. Push our centers down. And I'll kind of put it in my palm a little bit because I think that helps to shape it a little bit. Kind of twist around, kind of pushing those petals up. Curve and layering there. All right, two more, two more. 
Okay. All right. Again, I'm going to take this petal and put it between those two because that adds to that little big layered look. I'm going to make sure I'm lining my center up. And I'm going to kind of push it in my palm. If you look, they just kind of line up just about right. And I'm going to pull all these center ones up a little bit more. Maybe that little crease again. Them and pull them back up a little bit. I try not to do it too much until they've dried a little bit more just because I don't want them to be pulling loose as I'm trying and all the layers coming apart. Because I do want to kind of work them before they get too dried down because I don't want it to get dried flat. And I want it to have that breathing, that movement. Just kind of going back through and inching all of these. Oh, I still got another layer of that. There you go. Okay. One more. We're going to curl these. And you might need a bigger scraper for some of these. You know what I've got. I'm just making do with what I got because I don't do that many flowers, at least I haven't in a while, but I might now that I've been reminded how fun and easy they are. And you can take that one in half, that one in half, that one in half, and that one. Just kind of want to make sure you've got them folded so you can kind of add to that, but you also want them to have that round up here. Okay. All right. All right. So this is our yellow layered rose. And I'm really liking it too. I may just have to go get me some, some greenery, figure out and figure me out some leaves for it. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. I would love to have y'all hang out with me tomorrow when I'm doing my resin pour. I have this really cool kit that I got at Hobby Lobby that I'm making a little heart base with the filled center. Let me show you. Okay. I painted, I stenciled this on, on and then what I'm going to do tomorrow, I'm pour here. I'm trying to decide if I'll paint this a different color. I just want to add some glitter or what I want to do back here. So if y'all have suggestions, let me know. But I will see you tomorrow in the morning. Thank you. Talk to y'all later.